I'm Angela Sullivan, a self-taught artist. My art can be seen at asullivanart.com or angelasacrylics.blogspot.com. I hope you'll go and sign up for my newsletter. It's full of useful information. Today I'll do a painting from start to finish to show you how I apply thick, rich color. Hope you have a good day. Happy painting. Today I'll be doing another oil painting of a clear glass vase. I've done one yesterday, but the quality of that video didn't turn out as good as I'd hoped, so we're going to do one more. We're going to paint a little glass jar, and uh, I'm going to show you how to paint glass, or really not paint glass. <laughs> um, this, this is burnt umber. I'm going to draw in with that, and that's because that color is a is a color that you, when you paint over it, it just kind of goes away. We're going to paint this jar a little tiny bit bigger than the one yesterday. White or fatter. There's the back edge. Front edge. And I think we will paint what, um, some liquid in it again today. Make sure that you're... Uh, um, if you didn't watch the video yesterday, it might help to watch it just for the, uh, the instructions that I give while I'm painting it. This is your going to be our water. That's the bottom of the vase. And we're going to paint in with this burnt umber, and you'll see that go away. Uh, I think a lot of people paint glass, and they try to paint, they try to actually paint the glass, but it's kind of like what you would, I guess, call a negative painting because you um, focus on the background and the stuff around it to get you um, that illusion that there's a glass jar there. That's burnt umber. Um, the other, I've done two other cherry paintings. Um, this is going to, I'm just going to let this be the third in a series. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of ultramarine blue and mix it with a touch of um, cad yellow and then some alizarin crimson. And we are going to make a cherry. This time I think we're going to do it right here at the bottom of the vase right next to it. There, this I'm going to come in with my dark edge there. There. Put a little touch right there. That is a cherry. If you don't recognize it, <laughs> just keep watching. We're going to take straight alizarin, put right there. Uh, I didn't clean my brush, so I really still had some of that dark on there, but that's okay. I'm cleaning my brush. I'm going to take some cad red light and some um, alizarin crimson on my brush and that's going to make a lighter red. We're going to come in over here with this highlight area. And I'm going to put a touch right there as a reflective light. We'll come back in and um, do some more work to that in a few minutes. Alright. Um, let's take some burnt umber. And I want to just put my stem in just because there. I'm going to let it come up. Usually, maybe I'll let it come over into that. But, eh, I don't know. I'll straighten that up because I'm not really I'm not really liking the angle on my cherry. So let's get rid of it. <laughs> I'm dipping into my thinner. I'm going to get rid of that line right there because I don't like how I put that in. So I'm showing you how to erase. We don't need it all gone. Just some of it. Alright, there you go. Uh, I'm going to come back in with that burn umber again. Thinned. It's really thin. And I'm going to put this. I am going to let this come up and meet my base just like that. And usually I don't do that because I don't like two lines that intersect together. Um, it's kind of distracting, but in this case I'm going to let that happen. We're going to see what happens. If I hate it when we get through, we'll change it. Alright. Um... I've said a lot of times that I like making a grade color with equal parts of a blue, a red, and a yellow. I'm going to use ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and cad yellow, but you can use um, cad red if you want to use that for your red. You're going to come up with different grays, especially when you add white to that, um, and that's what our paint is going to be based on. I'm going to take that color mix with those equal parts and we're just going to put some indication lines right there. When you're painting glass, 
and I'm just telling you from my experience of what I've come up with before. I just put touches of color um, because I don't want it to look like I just drew a straight line of any color. I want, when I get through with this finished product, I, I want it to look like glass. And if you just paint it in, it that's what it looks like. It's something just painted in. Make sure on your lips that you get this kind of round and not like a point like an eye would be. Um, we're going to come in with some dark a little bit right there, a little across, and more dark right there. Alright. I'm cleaning my brush. And I don't know why I like to put my dabs of color in first, but for some reason I do. That's how I do it. I'm going to take some burnt cyana and some Indian yellow mixed together. I'm going to come in here and indicate a stopper. I'm just going to leave in, leave in your glass on both sides. And we're just putting the hint. There it is. And we're leaving glass there. And we're going to come in and work a little bit more with that in a few minutes. Clean your brush. Cad Yellow Light and a touch of Indian Yellow. We're going to make that lighter area on that stopper. Um... I just like to get that put in first. There it is, and there it is. And just leave your brush strokes. Um, that's a little glob right there, which is okay. My paintings do end up with that thick paint just left on in different areas. All right. We're going to take some more of that CAD light and mix it with a touch of, I think, a lizard, um, of CAD red light. That was CAD yellow light and CAD red. We're going to put a little bitty indication right here just to lighten that stopper up right there on that side. And that'll look good when we get done with it. Clean your brush good. All right. Now, I want to take some of that purplish um, background grayish color, that dark, um, that was the ultramarine, alizarin, and cad yellow. We're going to go ahead and do um, mix some white in there and get you a pretty light pile right there. I mix this with my brush on my palette. Uh, we're going to come in and put just little hints of this. This ain't usually how I do it, but I'm going to do it this way this time. That's the shadowed side. This is the shadowed side behind that stopper. Now, clean my brush one more time. We're going to establish, take and dip into your ultramarine blue, your lizarin, and just a little bit of your cab yellow. We're going to make our shadows. Let's put that there. There we go. And we're going to make this shadow come in under this um, cherry. There we go. Let's let that little touch come in right there. Alright. We'll, we'll, let's go ahead in that dark color while we're in there. Let's go ahead and put a little bit back here because we're, we're going to establish that. I'm going to thin that paint a little bit with thinner. I'm going to come back into this dark and let's put a little area right there. Kind of just establish that. Alright. Clean my brush again. Um, I usually keep two containers of my thinner or my cleaner and one of them I use for my I keep a paper towel in my hand at all times and wipe, squeeze, really, my paint out of my brush. Then I clean it in my dirty jar, and then I have another jar that I keep right there. So if I want a really crisp, um, clean mixture of paint, I'll clean it in that clean jar just to keep so much pigment from still remaining in my brush. I'm going to go back in um, with that pile of um, grayed background. It's according to how much paint... Um, of what color you use. If you use a little bit more blue, it'll lean toward blue. If you mention a little more red, it'll lean toward red. Or uh, even the yellow, or you can have it greenish. But this turned out today to be kind of lavenderish, purplish, gray. And that's what I wanted. It's a nice color. And keeping with the other two paintings that I just did, it'll kind of make a little set. I'm going to go in with some light, and we're going to, oh, I'm, going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to go in with some really the darkest color. We're going to establish our background line. 
as I said before, we don't want that line in the center. You want it kind of thirded. It could be at the top up here. It can be down here, but it's just more um, visually appealing if you do it. Don't do it in the middle because it'll, it'll cut your picture in half. It'll give that illusion, and it just won't be pleasing. If it, even if it looks okay, it, it'll be something about it that's not right. We are just, with that dark, establishing a line. And that's all we're doing, kind of like our table. Okay. Wipe your uh, brush off on your paper towel. And then um, clean it in your cleaner. Okay, now that same color, we're going to go in. I use zinc white or Kremitz white. Kremitz. Uh, I'm going to go in with some real light. We're fixing to, the space is going to come together. This we're going to paint right up to the edge of our drawing. I use long, um, deliberate strokes. I don't do this. I use long, deliberate streaks for my brush strokes. Here's the light. We're coming in with real light right there because that's the light side of the stopper. We're coming right up to our line. And I'm going to add some more white into that. Get it a little lighter. We're just... There we go. Here's our uh, water, actually. We're coming in with light. We'll go in and blend all that in a minute. The bottom of the water. Leave your table line right here because we will come in and blend that, but we want that color there. Come in with some, you probably need to wipe your brush off. Come in with some more light right here and then make a sweep right there in the very bottom. We kind of want to leave. Wipe, wipe your brush off. Um, maybe we'll do that. Here's, this is coming in by our cherry. I did get a little tiny bit of that alizarin in my, in with my brush when I went across that, but that's okay. We're just going to come in around and box everything in. And be sure and just leave definite strokes. It'll be all right. All right. Getting some more white in that paint with my brush. Here we go. Right up beside our base. There, we're leaving our shadow for now. All right. More light. I'm coming in right there. There we go. I'm getting, I got a little touch of darker right here. We're just going to go in there. And that. Oops. There we go. Now just kind of fill in the rest of your background with this same gray color. There we go. I'm going to come right there with a, just a stroke because I want this to you to be able to tell right there where that glass is. We're just going to come in with that dark just a little. Now, that's looking good. Cleaning my brush, I'm going to come right here, and I kind of kind of smear my stopper a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to come in with some white white. This is our uh, highlight side of the thing. We're just going to put a touch right there. I'm coming in with white white zinc white, a little edge right there. I'm gonna let's let's clean this up a little bit. I just put some zinc white. We're just going over our line there. We did just kind of go into this and that's okay. We're getting rid of that back. We're going to leave it, the hint of it, but we're kind of um, minimizing the focus of that. Just like that. 
There you go. Now, I'm coming in with some white white right back in here. We're going to establish this. I'm going to clean that line up a little bit and maybe put that little touch color right there because I want it to look like you're seeing table through that through that glass. We're going to um, shade this down a little bit, or I should say, we're going to take a little white. We're going to soften that back edge. We still want it, but we don't want it to be so uh, dominant. We're going to do that. There. Now. There you go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of that darkest color and reestablish like just tints of that right there. There. And maybe a little bit there. And there. Alright. That's looking good. Now, I'm going to come in here. I cleaned my brush. Um, I'm going to come in this cad red light and cad yellow light with a touch of alizarin. A lot of um, the cad yellow. Touch of alizarin, touch of cad red light. We are going to make this cherry highlights even brighter. That didn't do it. Cad yellow again, cad red, and just a touch of alizarin, I think. We're going to put that in right there. There. Mm. Alright. I'm going to soften that right there. Okay. Now. Oops. Alright. I'm going to take my um, palette knife. This is the one I use. It has kind of a sharp tip. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't know what size it is. Um. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to take this tool. It's called a paint eraser, and it's got a beveled, sharp edge. I'm going to draw in my cherry stem. And I'm we're going to experiment. I don't usually do this, but I am going to come right beside that vase and let them kind of touch. Let me sharpen that line up before I do that, because once I put that stem in, I can't, I can't do too much to it. Claiming some of that base back. There we go. Alright. Now, I'm going to take the point of that and I'm going to draw in my cherry stem. And here we go. There we go. And I am going to leave that. I'm going to take a little bitty liner brush. It's, I think, probably a zero. I believe that's what size it is. I'm going to do it in some dark... Um, some of that dark blue with cad yellow and some of that more to the bluish side. I'm going to come in and draw with that fine marker, marker, paintbrush, my cherry stem, just like that. Alright. Now, I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to take some, um, I'm going to take some bright zinc white and come I'm, I'm going to take some bright zinc white and I'm going to make a little um, highlight. That didn't do like I wanted it to. There we go. Just to, I'm going to leave paint built up. There you go. Now I'm going to take some bright white and put a touch right there because that is our highlighted areas on our vase. We're going to come across right here, like the top of that water where there would be a, there'd be a little reflection. And also you're going to have a reflection on that back edge, back in here, where that light's bouncing across. There you go. Um, I'm going to get my, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to bump that. I'm going to get my little brush, and what we're going to do is come in here with, at the edge of your vase, and you're going to crisp up some of these lines. Because we just want the indication of, um, of glass, not, not anything that's like dark, dark. There you go. We're going to come in there. All right. We're going to sharpen that line, or actually fade it um, a little bit. 
All right, now we're going to come into that shadow with some of that lighter, um, a mid-tone kind of, of your background color. We're going to come into those edges, sharpen those. I'm going to blur those edges on the cherry right there. I kind of like that darkness, and it's kind of more purple. I like that. I'm going to leave it. Let's put a little touch right there. All right. Now, uh, the cherry, we're going to work on that. I'm going to take some cad yellow light with just a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue, and that's going to give you a nice green. And we're going to come in on this cherry stem, put a little bit there. Just put some little touches of color there. I'm going to go back into that cad yellow with the Indian yellow, and I'm just going to put a little highlight right there. Maybe down the stem a tiny bit. We're going to come in with that same cat, uh, Indian yellow with some cad. I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work. Cad yellow light and some cad red light. And we're going to make a light red because I still don't have that light part established on my cherry that I want. Yeah, that's better. Just a couple of little hints. Of, and that's kind of globbed up, but I, I like that, so I'm leaving it. Um, we're going to take a little bitty bit of blue and some a tiny bit of white, and we're going to come in on the shadowed side of that cherry and just put a little hint of that blue area. I'm going to sharpen that up a little bit with this brush. Oops. I might have got too much back into that laser and let's establish that edge again. There. That's pretty good. All right. We're almost done. I'm, I'm liking how it's looking. Um, I'm going to come in with some cad red light and some alizarin. That's going to be that darkish middle tone red, really. And I'm going to put a hint of it on our jar because I, I just like to add kind of splashes of color here and there. Let's put a little bit right there that you can't even really see. And we'll put a reflective one right there. And then we're going to come back in with that lighter, a little bit lighter red. I'm just going to touch. That is our shadowed side, but I, I just want that to be there. Here's that one. A little bit redder. There. And then we're going to, um, I'm kind of liking that. We're going to come in with that light again, the cad yellow and the, um, Cad red light, Indian yellow is what I have. I'm just going to highlight that stopper a little bit more. Right there. I don't even know if you can tell I did anything, but I did. There we go. And I'm going to put a touch of that color somewhere. Let's see. Let's put it right there. There we go. And I think I'll even put a touch of it right, right here. And that's it. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this painting, and I think I'm going to leave it just like it is. Um, I see a little streak of dark I'm going to get rid of. I'm going back into that background color with some light zinc white. And I'm going to just go right here and get rid of that little streak that I had let happen. And there we go. Um, we could sharp, um, soften this edge more. And all you do is just come in and drag next to it on both sides, leaving the indication of a line, which I just did a little bit. You could do that more, but I think we're going to leave it just like that. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I invite you again to visit my blog. I'll be making more videos. Um, in the future, please be watching for them. And I've enjoyed this. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day.